Steve Dunleavy earned the term legendary reporter through his whatever it takes, larger than life approach to journalism. He was the ultimate tabloid journal. He poses as a, a lawyer, he poses as a cop, he poses as anybody. All's fair in love, war and news gathering. So if sometimes you push the edge of the envelope in trying to get something first, so be it. I don't have to go to confession after it. His father was a photographer for the Sydney Sun in 1953 when Dunleavy joined the opposition tabloid Daily Mirror and punctured the tyres on his father's car to get a scoop, setting the scene for a rambunctious, swashbuckling and hard-drinking career through Australia, Dancing Asia and America. He joined Rupert Murdoch as a foreign correspondent in 1967 and became the charismatic frontline crime reporter for the New York Post and later the TV program A Current a Affair, which introduced tabloid TV direction. to America. A soul imprisoned in fame and fortune without the freedom of happiness. It was bigger in America than he ever was here because he went on to A Current Affair over there. He was somewhere to the right of Genghis Khan. He supported the coppers no matter what the coppers did. If they shot somebody, it didn't matter. You know, that was all in the line of duty. Known as Murdoch's attack dog, he retired in 2008. Your loyalty to the company or the paper that you're working at has absolutely defied description. A wonderful journalist, a great career, and an even better man. One night, really, Lane's, which was the really classy uh, upmarket uh, bar, and we were there, and then a bunch of foreign correspondents decided we'd go across the road to some other bar. And it was snowing, there's snow everywhere, and there was a young Norwegian heiress there, I think supposedly with her, with her fiance. But when we got to the other bar, Dunleavy wasn't there, and neither was the heiress. And we glanced out the window, and Dunleavy and the heiress are doing some horizontal folk dancing in the snow. And so they're so preoccupied that a snowplow came along and ran over him and broke his foot. He didn't realise until he sewed up next day that he had a broken foot and went to hospital. But when the story got out, Pete Hamill, who was not a great Dunleavy fan, said, I hope it wasn't his writing foot.